version 2 of add curve shape the add-on for blender to add shapes using curves while you're sculpting is now out and in this video we're going to look at how to install the new version see what's different in this new version and look at some workflows that we can use with it so if you don't have it yet the link will be in the description of the video below uh, and if you have it uh, let's go into preferences and uninstalled remove uh, the previous version so if i just go into add-ons and go into mpi here you can see that i have a version installed here it's actually the new version but i'll remove it here so that you can follow along uh, remove yes please thank you and now to install the new version i'll just go into install i'll navigate to the folder where i have that new version at and i'll just select that zip file the second version here install add-on and here we have it we can turn it on by clicking here and you can see that in the preferences we have quite a few things in this new version and i'm going to go over all of them in this video first let's look at the major changes in the add-on so if i go into my sculpting tab here if i just activate add curve shape let's look at the single shape first and so now if i press enter you can see that uh, we now have a modifier here uh, for the thickness so that we can control our thickness this time around now if you want you can see that this is going to change the way that the previous version worked uh, if you want to you can remove the solidify and we can go back to what we had before do a control F here and choose solidify faces and we can do this process instead this way we can scale this interface like I showed you in the previous videos. Now, once we're happy with that, we can press enter and we have our shape. Now, one of the changes here, uh, here in the preferences, you can see that I have a Boolean join here and I also have the solidify, so you can remove solidify if you don't want to add that modifier like we saw there. And uh, Boolean join, basically, it's joining as a boolean instead of just doing an object join what that will do uh, to our model if i come in here and i hide uh, my model here you can see that now there's a hole in my module uh, when i edit uh, that shape and my shape also has a hole in there so this might be something that you want to use or maybe not you can also see that we had, uh, in this process, the faces here are triangulated, which can give better results, but if you like an handgun, you can turn off uh, triangulate in the options, in the preferences here. Now, the reason why that Boolean join is now an option is because if you, for example, you're using a Dynatopo uh, workflow, I say OK to that, a Dynatopo workflow, these will be, let me just bring this down a little bit. It will be better here when I start changing geometry as uh, it, the shapes will be better connected. Uh, if Boolean join is, is not um, set up in the pre preferences, then it will be two different objects and doing what I just did, even with Dynatopo, is gonna be uh, hard to accomplish. Now, if you, with that said, if you're using a, a remesh option, when you have Dynatopo off and you're using remesh, like with the grid, let me just put this way. So if I'm using like remesh with the grid, then in that case, you don't really need Boolean join and you can just remesh and it will glue everything together. Now, another option that you have is that you can select to add a remesh modifier and you can set uh, the octa tree depth here and if you press if you use this auto remesh option it will instantly apply it so let's look at that process so i'm going to trigger my sculpt add curve shape here and this time around i'm going to do uh two curves so pressing enter i got this two curves and if I use, now you can see that we have an extra uh, step here, and that's to use the mouse wheel to change the topology. So if I use my mouse wheel, you can see that I can increase the topology. And if I hold shift and then move my mouse wheel, 
I can change the topology uh, in a different direction, as you can see there. Once I'm happy with the topology that I have, I can press enter. And you can see we have shrink wrap applied here and the solidify as well. So we can, if we like, we can turn off shrink wrap uh, and actually get rid of it. And well, I'll do that in this case. And we have our solidify here as well going in and out. And you can see that uh, the mesh is in front of the other mesh, which is something that you can change also in the preferences here in show in front. And I'll show you right away here. If we go to the object properties, this is basically in viewport display in front is set here. So you can actually turn these off midway through this process. So you got the just an enter. So I'm going to commit to that. And if I press enter now, having remesh on, you can see that now we have a remesh modifier applied because of this remesh here in the preferences. So I could possibly change this, make it a bit bigger and that looks better. Octree depth is, uh, looks like at six here it's better. So you can change this. So it starts at six. Let's move it to six. And next I'm going to use auto remesh next time around and do the same process. So I'm happy with this and I can now uh, apply this and now I can go back into turning on Dynatopo for example and keep sculpting on that. So with Auto Remesh turned on, let's see what kind of result do we have. So I'm going to use my shortcut here and I'll do the same thing here. Press enter and we can see it's a bit off there. I can turn off shrink wrap if I want to keep this as it is. And uh, I'll just uh, accept that. I can further adjust it. So I'll press enter again just to commit to that. And now you can see that the modifier is gone because it has been applied because we selected auto remesh here. Now, uh, if you don't want holes in the mesh, like I said, you can turn off Boolean join. Uh, I don't usually use remesh on my process. Now, the shrink wrap is basically if you want the shrink wrap modifier to be added. And the same thing goes for the solidify. Let's turn off Boolean join just for a second here. So in this, ver so in this version, you can add multiple uh, curves to create your shapes. So if I just, uh, let's just add some curves here. Now, it's important that you use the same um, that you go through and use the same flow for each one of your curves. Because right now, as you've seen, I've done it all in the same direction. And if I commit to that, and I can change this any way I like. If I commit to that, everything is fine. And we get to this stage. And as you can see now, it's different. My uh, original mesh is masked and I have a different shape here that you can see it's not cut because it wasn't a boolean join operation so there's no cuts in the mesh as you can see but anyway as I was saying if I for example do the following which is do a curve in this direction and then do a curve in that direction we're gonna have this issue okay so Let's keep going. I'll just commit to that. It's always good, obviously, to keep saving your mesh before you do operations like this. But if, for example, I want to get rid of that now uh, and and go into, I can go into Edit Face Set and um, choose Delete Geometry and click on that, and that's gone. And there's no holes in my mesh. In if Boolean Join was selected in the preferences, and now I had a hole in my mesh and that would be a bit. Now with the shrink wrap and the solidify modifiers that we use in this version, uh, they make it uh, so that we can create like uh, some cool shapes and then really adjust them as we like. For example, now let's, let's make that a bit simpler and holding shift and using the mouse wheel here. So if I really want to I commit, let's commit to that, change stuff around. It's really easy because I can just like select these points here and move them and it's it's going to stay on the mesh. So if, if you know how Blender works, 
this is nothing new to you and you obviously we can use proportional editing as well and do a grab here and we can actually change the position of the mesh a lot and using the mouse wheel here just change a part of it i hope uh, this speeds up uh, your workflow and have a go have a try check out if you prefer boolean mesh and or not i would use boolean join mainly if you're using mainly a dynatopo and you can see preferred for dynatopo workflow a dynatopo workflow would be better because if i commit commit to this right now and i try to do a dynatopo here let's alt a to clear this mask if i try to do dynatopo right now and I'm going to show you the geometry as it is. And let's turn on uh, Dynatopo. Oh, I'm in Edit Face Set, that's why. Okay, so if I turn on Dynatopo now, uh, it gives me this message. Obviously, the UVs, blah, 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 they're going to be gone. And I usually use a setting of two here. If I start Dynatopoing this here, first of all, as soon as I move my mesh, you can see what's going to happen with the geometry. But if I now start to like Dynatopo this, and you'll see that they are not really, it's going to be really hard to join these shapes. Even with the clay, the clay is a bit better, but you see that line there, right? So to fix that, you can use Boolean join and that will uh, make your life easier if you're using Dynatopo. And a combination of remesh as well will fix, uh, will help you speed up your process. So it's up to you how you like to work and uh, I'm going to leave you and see you in the next version possibly.